The Lone Ranger. <laughs> I.O. Silver! Away! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty I.O. Silver, the Lone Ranger. Fearless Indian friend Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early west. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great hawk Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Fire Silver! this bunch into the corral, we'll send her out again. Why does she do it, huh? I fed her once, when she was hungry. I don't think there is a stallion alive that can resist her, huh? Silver, what is it, big fella? What's the matter? I don't hear anything. It's nothing real. He senses something. Kimusabi, do you know where we are? Yes, of course. Wild Horse Valley, his home. Where you first saw him. Yes, let's make camp here, up on that hill. Come on, big fella, you're in for a treat. I'll never forget the moment we first saw Silver. It was down there, below that ridge, deep in Wild Horse Valley. He was fighting gallantly for his life against the most enormous buffalo I'd ever seen. The sun reflected off his coat like gleaming silver. He had to be the white stallion so many horsemen had talked about in awe. He was magnificent and courageous. But he was outweighed two to one, and his strength was giving out. Nothing would stop me from helping this magnificent horse. Easy, easy, big fella. Take a rest. You've earned it. Tonto, but we've got to try to nurse him back. We cared for him day and night for several days, and then he was well enough to leave. I never wanted anything more than that horse, but he'd fought for his freedom, and so I said goodbye and sent him back into Wild Horse Valley. He stopped. Isn't he beautiful? His coat shines like silver. Silver. Yes. Silver! Silver! Look at him! Here, Silver! Even now, I can't explain. 
explain the strange, almost mystical bond that was forged between us that day. He knows he's back home. Here's your surprise, my friend. Go and run among the others tonight. Visit your old home. We'll see you at sunup. Go, big fella. Enjoy your homecoming. What's the matter, Tonto? I don't know, but something's not right. One horse. Oh, 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 but what a one! Bring him right in, my pretty lady. You got us a champion here. said Gaucho. The black mare. She didn't rope a wild horse. This one belongs to somebody. Look! Silver horseshoes. Ah, they'll fetch a good price and so will a horse. He's gonna try and jump the fence. Quick, the bowlers! Again, fast! That'll do it. Marshal him. Get him on the train. We'll put new shoes on him on the ranch. And, uh, sell him fast. Right, Senor Gaspar? You catch on quick, Gaucho. <laughs> Right, Tonto. These are tiny bits of silver embedded in the broken post. Silver was corralled and tried to kick down the fence. Yes. Thank heaven we know he's alive. We'll ride double and see where those railroad tracks lead. Hmm. A masked man and an Indian following the train tracks here. Gaucho, hurry up with that white stallion. Está terminado. All finished. The white stallion now has regular horseshoes, and we have the silver ones. Good work. Get him inside and keep him quiet. State your business, gentlemen. I'm looking for a horse, a white stallion. No, no white stallion here. Whole bunch of wild ponies, but no white stallion. Mind if we look around? Yeah. This is private property, mister. And you and your friend are right this moment invited to Vam Moose. What are you hiding? Gaucho. A demonstration of the Argentine bolas. I've always heard that Argentine gauchos are as good with the bolas as American cowboys are with the lariat. But of course, we hold on to the lariat so we can use it again. And we always carry more than one bolas. <laughs> I said 
vamoose, and I mean vamoose. We take the stallion to Judge Raleigh's and sell him. Now, the judge will pay plenty for a horse for that rotten kid of his. I said I want a horse, Father. A real horse, not a stupid Indian pony. Whatever you say, Robbie. Can he handle a good horse, Sam? Well, Judge Raleigh, boy's a little rough. He, you kicked his ribs pretty hard, Robbie. He wouldn't jump. Next time, I'll be wearing my pointed spurs. Only expert riders should wear spurs, Judge Raleigh. Well, Sam, if my boy isn't an expert rider, it's your fault. Yes, sir. Now, you get over to the KXX and see if Bart Casper's got a horse good enough for my Robbie. Gentlemen, in the whole world, I think being in the right place at the right time is the most important. Casper, I was just... I know. Take a look, Judge Raleigh. I think you'll see the very horse you want for Master Robbie. I want him. I'll enjoy teaching him who's boss. I don't know how long I'll need the horse, Mr. Whitney. I might be buying one from Bart Caspar. What can you tell me about him? He claims the Indians gave him roundup rights to Wild Horse Valley. Well, guess they did. He sure gets some beauties. As for mine, uh, why don't you just look around and pick out the one you want? That'll be $2.23. Do you take silver? Do I take silver here? Hey, you want to see the darnest thing you ever saw? A silver shoe. Who gave you that? That gaucho who works out at the XKK left about 15 minutes ago. He's a strange bird, throws those bolas instead of... Hey, where'd he go? Who would be able to check on Bart Kaspar's deal with the Indians for Wild Horse Valley? Only one man, the judge, Judge Raleigh. He's got a ranch a few miles out of town. Thanks, Mr. Whitney. Hmm, Gaucho came this way. No, don't shoot him. Go, Kuma. You don't like this bright light. Go, vamos. So, you pretended to be the Indian chief. You gave Casper the rights to the Wild Horse Valley. Rights you didn't have to give. All right, Indian. I am really sorry. <laughs> Move, you stupid horse! Move! Inside! You don't want to listen. I'll put on my pointed spurs and you'll do everything I say. Come on! I'll check on Casper and the Indian rights tomorrow. The Indian chief came here himself and signed the agreement. Judge, I'm sure someone else pretended to be the Indian chief. Why, only an out-and-out -out criminal would. I'll check my papers on the Indian rights pronto. There's a riderless horse up on the hill. Been there all day, just watching. Beautiful jet black wild mare. Almost a legend around these parts. Hey! Silver? Judge, did you buy a white stallion from Bart Caspar? Why, yes. Yes, I did. Silver! Silver! <laughs> Silver! Silver, big fella, we're back together again. <laughs> The 
That's my horse. He's mine. Is he now? Look at the two of them. When have you ever had an animal or human being touch you with such tenderness and love? That horse doesn't like me. Animals don't like me. People don't like me. Nobody likes me. I have to show them I'm strong. When you're really strong, you don't have to show it, Robbie. It's something you know inside. And it begins with the way you talk to others. Animals and humans respond to the sound in your voice. You don't have to yell to get attention or respect. The masked man's right son. And your father the crop, Robbie. And pet Silver gently and say something softly to him. Something you really mean. Silver, you're you're very beautiful. I I I think you're the most. Uh, he he likes me. Yes, Robbie. It's a good feeling, isn't it? Yes. A feeling we're gonna have a lot more of around here. Sam? Yes, Judge? You catch me or Robbie hollering, and, well, you just let us know, you hear? Now, Mass Man, uh, what? Where is he? Hiya, Silver! Away! He left these silver ingots to pay you back for the horse and the silver bullet. Who, who is that Mask Man, Sam? I wouldn't want to be in Bart Casper's shoes right now. That Mask Man's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Senor Gaspar, the wild horses are in the cattle cars. Good. We're shipping them out tonight. Before the judge finds out you were the Indian chief who gave me the rights. <laughs> Besides, there are no more wild horses left in Wild Horse Valley. We'll move on to the Wild Horse Valleys of New Mexico, Oklahoma, Arizona. As for the black mare, she served a purpose. I think it's time we corral her, too. Hmm? Tonto never returned to camp. He's in trouble. Let's go, big fella. Hey, old Silver, away! Get her! I've got her! the train! There's three.
she'll be free to run in Wild Horse Valley for the rest of her life. With her friends. The first horse was more like a dog in size, only 10 to 20 inches high. Discoveries show that man rode horseback more than 5,000 years ago. Only 200 years ago, there were millions of wild horses in the United States. Today, less than 20,000. But they are all protected by congressional law. Till next time, amigos. Adios.